So what is the DJI Ronin 4D? A full frame camera with a built in gimbal? Or is it a gimbal with a built in camera? With the built in wireless video transmission and control system and ProRes RAW recording? Oh, and it's 6K and 8K. What is happening? This thing from DJI just came. Now, interesting thing this time, I have no clue what it is. I know it's a new kind of product. Interesting. What the hell? That is so cool. This looks super high end. Wow. Ronin 4D. Well, it can't be just a gimbal because it has a camera on top. Wow, it looks like a C300 or something with a gimbal built in. That's amazing. Okay guys, this is a review, so it has to be unbiased, but it is so hard not to get excited about the Ronin 4D from DJI. It is something completely revolutionary in my eyes. The marriage between a gimbal and a camera that was long overdue. So guys, this is the first time I'm using the Ronin 4D outdoors. Now, obviously we can't go anywhere where there are a lot of people because we signed an NDA and I know there were leaks of this uh, recently before the launch, but if anybody sees this, like anybody who knows anything about cameras, they will be like, what the hell is that? It's amazing. So you can see when I'm moving, it's literally evening out all of my steps. It's completely stable. Um, I, I will record this image now, so you see exactly what the camera is seeing cut against this. It's completely steady. It's very steady as opposed to what it looks like from the outside. This really is nothing short of a revolution in my opinion. So when the first handheld gimbal was announced eight years ago, that was the Freefly Movi M10, I asked, can we build this technology into a camera? Turns out that wasn't so easy. So we saw many years of advancements in the gimbal field with DJI and others advancing the technology further and further. The one hand gimbals really became the standard over the last few years with high quality cameras shrinking and getting lighter as well. At the same time, DJI developed high end image transmission systems for their drones and also learned how to build proper interchangeable lens camera modules with the Zenmuse X5 and X7 cameras for their inspired drones. And here we are, it's 2021 and DJI engineers probably spent years in their caves to come up with the culmination of all those technologies and put them together in the Ronin 4D. Before talking about the specs of this device, and I can't just even call it just a camera, let me point out that I don't think the name does it justice. DJI used to call their gimbals Ronin, then they kind of dropped the Ronin and called them only RS2 and RSC2, but their Ronins never contained a camera. Now this here really is a league on its own and it would definitely deserve its own name. But anyway, the 4D in Ronin 4D is actually quite accurate. On top of what normal 3-axis gimbals are able to do, the Ronin 4D adds a 4th axis, the Z-axis, to the stabilization experience. And that's also its key feature. Having the Z-axis means that the typical vertical shake that is introduced by walking or running is completely evened out. That means you can shoot super steady images with this no matter how you move the camera. And the way DJI achieves that vertical stabilization is through utilizing sensors in the front here and at the bottom of the Ronin 4D, which measure its position in space and the distance to objects and to the ground. It's simply breathtaking. So I'm recording the image um, from the camera right now, you can see how steady it is. It, it probably doesn't look steady to you uh, when you see the camera popping up and down like this, but that's really what our head does when we are walking. Um, just our brain is filtering out that movement. And you know, that's the problem of, of gimbals because that Z axis is usually not stabilized. And now we have it built into the camera. And as if that fourth axis stabilization alone wasn't enough, DJI built a highly professional cinematography concept around that 4-axis gimbal. The Ronin 4D comes with a full-frame sensor camera called X9, which can either shoot 6K or 8K, depending on the camera package you choose. 
DJI for now sent us the 6K version for testing because the 8K version of the X9 is still in development. Yet I am already very, very impressed. This full frame camera records not only in H.264 codec, but also in ProRes 422HQ and ProRes RAW. This is the only camera that can record ProRes RAW internally apart from DJI's own Zenmuse X7 for the Inspire 2 drone. Otherwise, ProRes RAW can only be recorded on Atomos external recorders. Now there are three different recording media that the Ronin 4D uses. DJI's own Pro SSD with 1TB to record the highest quality modes from the camera. Alternatively, CF Express Type B storage cards and also normal external SSDs with a USB-C port also work. And in terms of frame rates, this X9 6K camera records 6K in up to 60 frames per second and in 4K up to 120 frames per second. You can record 6K in full frame in both ProRes RAW and normal ProRes codecs. But if you want 4K ProRes RAW, you have to switch to the Super 35 crop mode. Yes, you can even record 4K 120 in ProRes RAW in the Super 35 mode. You just need to be aware that these high frame rates are even further cropped top and bottom, in this case to a 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio. This X9 6K has a dual native ISO of 800 and 5000 and DJI claims that it offers over 14 stops of dynamic range. Because the firmware was not final, we didn't perform one of our standardized lab tests including dynamic range, latitude and rolling shutter tests yet. We will get those tests done soon and publish the results on CineD.com of course. Now what's also amazing is that the X9 cameras support interchangeable lens mounts, including the DL mount which is DJI's proprietary mount. The great thing however is that there is also an E-mount adapter and an M-mount adapter which allows you to use Sony and Leica lenses. Now these mounts work fully electronically, meaning you are able to change the aperture and also the focus on these lenses through the Ronin 4D. Now what's absolutely unbelievable for me is how they were able to fit so many mechanical and D-filter combinations inside this very small X9 camera brain. It has nine full stops of ND built in, ranging between 1 half and 1 512 strength, which is much more than the built-in NDs of any other camera that I can think of, even the variable ones. And I noticed no significant color shift at all using these ND filters. Now let's talk about focusing. The sensor doesn't have any face detection points, so traditional autofocusing is not available. But they are shipping the DJI Ronin 4D with a LiDAR focusing system that actually works remarkably well. It gives us autofocus even for third-party E-mount lenses, for example. And not only autofocusing is possible. Using the focus wheel on the right-hand grip, you can comfortably pull and focus manually. The Ronin 4D uses the lens's motor for that and it allows for remarkably precise focusing. Also very helpful is the scale on the side of the screen, which gives you accurate distance readings after you calibrated the lens. There is also an innovative feature called LiDAR Waveform, which is a new assistive focusing tool that shows you the distance from objects in front of your lens in a top-down view. DJI also ships it with a lens motor that allows you to use fully manual lenses with the Ronin 4D and its LiDAR technology. By combining the two, fully manual lenses suddenly become autofocus lenses after calibration. Lens calibrations can be saved and easily reloaded after changing lenses. There's a mode called Automated Manual Focus, which is a mixture of autofocus and manual focus. In this mode, the focus wheel on the right grip rotates automatically when the focus point moves, which allows the user to jump in and focus manually, which is a very, very smart and intuitive function. Active Track Pro is also available, a way to track persons and other subjects using DJI's AI technology to keep them in the shot. We know this already from DJI's drones. It makes complex movements around subjects much easier to execute. Now let's take a look at the Ronin 4D's build quality for a second. You can tell that a lot of cinematographers helped on building this device because it seems like it really can take a beating, despite the fact that there is a gimbal built in. It doesn't seem flimsy at all, everything seems very proper and it feels like it can really survive the hard conditions on some sets, especially of course because this will constantly be moving on shoots. 
The body is made of aluminum magnesium alloy and the Z-axis arm is made with carbon fiber. Now the Ronin 4D's main monitor is a 5.5 inch 1000 nit touchscreen display that gives you a very bright and also very sharp image with access to a user interface that really leaves very little to be desired. If you compare this with the camera menus from an average normal camera, it's incredible how intuitive all the settings can be found on this user interface. It really reminds me completely of the interface from Blackmagic cameras, which is similarly well organized and optimized for touch operation. However, you don't have to use the touch screen. There is also a navigation wheel on the side here, which also makes it a breeze to use even when you're wearing gloves, for example. But there is another monitor that comes with a Ronin 4D. The entire system actually from the ground up is really built around remote operation. So it actually comes with a seven inch remote monitor that is even brighter with 1500 nit. You can simply take off the handles from the camera and slide them onto the monitor. That enables you to control everything remotely, including focus, the gimbal, recording on and off, all the camera settings, and you can even play back raw footage remotely. So here's the monitor and the quality is amazing. Um, it uses the O3. O3 is their image transmission that they also use in their drones. And that's why actually the distance you can use this for is amazing because it's made for drones. What's also really great is the latency, very low latency. And yeah, the cool thing about this device is also that the grips that I use here are the ones from the camera and you can control everything on this monitor. You have the scale here for the autofocus or manual focus actually. Um, you can change the white balance, you can change shutter speed, you can change iris, you can change ISO. Um, pretty much everything I think, um, and it's a proper monitor. I mean, it has everything a monitor should have. Uh, false color, waveform, peaking, zebra, and it's a very bright monitor as well. I mean, today is not a very sunny day, but this is a 1500 nit display. So you are able to use this outdoors to a degree, uh, even when it's relatively bright. So that's pretty amazing. Remote transmission is ingrained into the very concept of the Ronin 4D. Of course, DJI builds on their drone image transmission technology called O3. So the range is also exceptional. 20,000 feet or six kilometers unobstructed with really barely noticeable latency. Of course, this frees up a lot of possibilities for remote operation. In lots of sports or action sequences or in car to car shoots, it's more efficient to have an operator and a separate person who is framing the shot on their remote monitor. So actually let's try running with this so you see what the Z axis is actually doing. So, whoa. So this is amazing. I mean, I can already see that this is a shot that is relatively hard to achieve with a normal gimbal. I mean, especially here on uneven ground, you would always have the up and down movement unless you have gimbal feet. Some people have gimbal feet, you know. Wow, this is exhausting. And I can already see the biggest downside of that thing. It's heavy and unlike other cameras, you can't actually put it on your shoulder. However, is there really no way to put it on your shoulder? Let's see about that. Um, we tried something, so let's take a look. Okay guys, we tried something here. This is a bit of a shitty rig. This is just to demonstrate that this thing doesn't have to be in front of you, which is very, very exhausting because it's very heavy. It can be on your shoulder. Now, what's the downside? Of course, first of all, it doesn't really work yet. These um, two handles that Johnny uses here are not connected to the body, so he can't actually operate the camera. But this is just a proof of concept. Now, there is one downside, of course, which is the camera is relatively high. Now, I just happen to be tall enough and Johnny is not as tall as me, so it is in my face, but like if you have two people who have the same uh, height, you will have a problem because the camera will be too high. But let's just take a look at what it looks like when he follows me, uh, just for a normal walking, it should look like a steady cam actually. And I mean, in theory, and you see it going up and down, of course you have the typical gimbal uh, drag in a way, but if I start running and he follows me, it should work too. <laughs> So it's actually, you know, this can work on the shoulder. 
although it's not made for that, it, you know, first time I see a gimbal on the shoulder, so that's pretty amazing. The Ronin 4D uses the TB50 batteries that DJI also uses for the Ronin 2 and the Inspire drones. According to DJI, they are supposed to give you around 150 minutes of running time on the Ronin 4D. However, I found this to be relatively unrealistic in normal shooting conditions. On average, when shooting outdoors in cooling autumn temperatures, a battery lasted for less than one and a half hours. That's still okay, but I would count that as a downside, as you will have to buy a bunch of those batteries to get through a full shooting day. Now, I think we showed you that the Ronin 4D is a great camera for moving shots handheld if you can deal with its weight. But what about normal tripod work? Can you actually mount a heavier, larger lens on it? After all, it's a high-end image capturing device that offers ProRes RAW internally from a full-frame sensor. So why not use it as the only camera on the shoot? Turns out it's possible, but it takes a bit of trickery. If you want to mount a heavy lens on the Ronin 4D, of course you can't use the Z-axis arm anymore, but that's not a problem, you can simply lock it. But there are two issues that remain. You will still to definitely have to support that lens as the camera mount cannot hold such a heavy lens on its own. That means you need to use an unusually long lens support in order to make that work. And secondly, the lens ends up being very, very high up. But it is possible, and the fact that there are adapters to almost every other lens mount from mounts such as the E-mount also means that you can even mount a PL lens to the Ronin 4D. Alright, let's slowly wrap it up here with this initial review. The DJI Ronin 4D is an extremely complex product and it definitely deserves a lot more attention from us here in the future. I want to look more closely at various aspects of the device in upcoming videos. For now, I can only say that it feels like something from the future. For me, this is nothing short of a revolution and while it's certainly not for everybody, I think it means that most cameras will not look the same in a few years from now. It's the beginning of a new category of gimbal cameras and it will make many shots that have been quite tricky to execute so far become much more mainstream in a very short amount of time. And at the time of the recording of this video, I had no definite information about the pricing of the Ronin 4D, but knowing DJI, this will be reasonably priced for what it is and what it offers. The version with the X9 6K camera will be available starting in December and the 8K camera will be released at a later date. And last but not least, I really want to say a huge thank you to our team members Florian Mills and Luciano Olievski, who were absolutely fundamental in making this review, both in shooting and post-production. Alright, thanks everybody for watching, stay tuned for CineD for a lot more about the DJI Ronin 4D as we continue our tests and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you on the next one.